How's it going, Chef? Uh, it's going okay. Quick question. Yeah, what's up? Do either of your kids listen to music? One of them does a lot. Who's that? My daughter. Okay. All right. Yeah. Who, uh, what, who, does she only like whatever is <laughs> like for her at this time? Like, does she ever, ever delve into anything older without um, your, like, yeah, that's the caveat. No, I would say she likes whatever is, uh, my impression has been if it's there, it needs to be a meme first. Like it has to have like an internet presence. She learns about the song and then she really likes the song. Okay. Yeah. So like there's been some older songs that she likes because of that. Gotcha. But uh, for the most part, it's whatever's currently popular um, and uh, a mixture of like random songs that Gabby and I have kind of like uh, played a lot that she likes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how how people find music and yeah. and their like i don't know their relationship to it i mean honestly i'm thinking about that all the time how people <laughs> find music and what their relationship to music is but um uh and there are two things recently that have me kind of thinking about that well, okay three, well yeah two three things uh in particular one is there's a uh, a podcast series uh, and this is not a paid endorsement, everybody. This is just what I've been listening to over the past week called The Blog Era. Okay. And it is about hip-hop blogs, how they popped up. Uh, not even popped up, the work behind them. Yeah. Uh, and how influential they were to for people to hear new music, for artists to get music out there. And... um and and all of that. So uh it's by um it's by two guys. Um what are their names? Eric and Jeff. Okay. They make It's the Real, which had which was like a comedy, they were like a comedy duo yeah. who made like fun of hip hop stuff or whatever. Um, but with love, I should say that, because they Amen. are two Jewish dudes. Um <laughs> 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 but um uh, and were beloved by the community, blah, blah, blah. And so they, they've they made this uh, podcast series about the blog era. So that's like, I don't know, early aughts into 2010. So oh. like, yeah, like 2004 or five into 2010, just about that period of like, yeah. Nah, right. And um, what, two dope boys, like just. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been thinking about that because, you know, they're talking to all the people who are of that time and what it was like to put those things together and, and work through that and then deal with record labels and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they're, it's a very well produced and thought out piece of work. Um, but it's also just like, man, we're nostalgic for 2009 now. <laughs> oh, jeez. It hits you. I know, but I mean that was 14 years ago, so yeah, I guess because everything up on that time. Yeah, everything you just described was like me in college. Yes, like so, that, that's how I was getting really into hip hop. Like, uh, I don't think a day went by without me checking out two Doughboys. Like that okay. was like mandatory. Like I go on S O H H, uh, mm -hmm. two Doughboys. I would spend a lot of time on uh, the S O H H forums and. Uh, UGHH was another big one for me. Um, okay. And uh like uh you like UGHH was big for me because uh there was a producer forum where like you know art like producers would literally share beats as mm -hmm. they learned how to play with equipment and uh there was this like Filipino kid that was like from some random suburb in Jersey that was like crushing it. They're like, "Oh, the hell is this kid?" He's like Right, like he's not connected to the like hip hop scene directly, um, right. and he uh, he ends up becoming like a really big producer to his kid Illmind, um, and like he's worked with like uh, like major like Broadway shows. He's worked on musicals as well as like a ton of like actual big hip hop records. But like I saw this dude start making beats on a forum and just share them. Like, hey, you like my drums? 
<laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, it was just trippy to me that like the like the hip hop was uh, uh, that accessible at that time. Um, mm-hmm. there, it, it was the first time where like uh, I, I kind of like got the idea that uh, if I want to pursue art and I'm genuine about it, um, the barrier to success might be far, but the ba- the access to the people doing it wasn't. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I I was just I'm just finding this whole series fast fascinating. I I it's just wrapped up. Um yeah. so you can listen it's like 10 episodes. It's a, oh, it's yeah. a very good listen. I highly recommend it to anyone who is music minded and kind of remember things of that time. Um but uh I mean I guess I was just like wow, okay, so we're just feeling nostalgic about mixtapes, which is I mean <laughs> great but also wild. Um to be oh, around, yeah. to just be like, oh, sure. But then I had like a wild kind of, and this, I mean, I've already tweeted out that this happened. So, uh, but this is, I'm still laughing about it. Um, the oh. other night um, I was watching uh, uh, De La Soul on Drink Champs, mm. right? Um, and uh, for those who don't know, Drink Champs is, I mean, it's uh, they record the audio and release it, but it's really just like a a, a video series of uh, of uh, Noriega, um, uh, and DJ F, what EFN? Yeah, DJ EFN, and they invite uh rappers or anyone I don't know, just people on. Yeah. And they uh, hip hop adjacent. Anyone who's hip hop adjacent, and they yeah. uh, get drunk mm-hmm. and talk. And the shortest episode that I've seen, just looking at the times on YouTube, is like an hour and a half. They are on average two hours and twenty minutes long. Yep, on average. Uh, some are three. There was someone who had four hours, and I was just like, "There's nothing that you've done that would make me want to listen to four hours of you getting <laughs> drunk and talking." I don't think so. I can't even remember who it was, but I know I was like, "That's an, an, insane." Um, <laughs> but so I was watching uh, the uh, the recent De La Soul, which uh, came out in the past week or so, um, because uh, De La did an episode before a few years ago, and I watched that during the soft shutdown of COVID. Uh, of Covidian times and um, uh, and Dela is my favorite. So I'm watching it and they're talking about, and I don't know how, but my roommate and I got to talking about just like older rap in general. Okay. And, um, and my roommate uh, who again is a lovely mid thirties white guy from Alabama. Um, who is not at all clueless, but he's in his mid thirties. So his nostalgia is different from my nostalgia. Okay. So he was trying to remember the name of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. That's who he was trying. That's what he was trying to remember. And okay. he was like, I can't remember the name of the group, but they have that song. He's like, it's that, that hip hop song that everyone knows. Um, and first I'm thinking, is he talking about the Sugar Hill Gang? And, and he's like, no, it's the one where, and he just rapped out, <laughs> uh, traffic is crazy. Everybody's mad. And I went, oh, Grandmaster Flash. <laughs> <laughs> and yo, I can't stop laughing at it. <laughs> traffic is crazy. Everybody's mad is the funniest thing I've heard in a long time, a long time. And it's oh, not man. at all correct, and yet it is. If you, I mean, I, I guess if you grew up in the suburbs, yes, that's exactly the same as um, <laughs> broken glass everywhere, people pissing in the streets. You know, they just don't care. It's exactly the same. <laughs> it's precisely the same, just placed in a different location. <laughs> Yo, that's awesome. Traffic uh, is crazy. Everyone's mad is the <laughs> almond milk of that song right there. I love that. <laughs> just 
He's like, I, I know I have these words wrong. I'm like, N- I mean, but the spirit is right. Yeah, that's the right energy. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> yeah, that was the, the, the right spirit. That's oh, what you boy. felt when you heard it, you know? Yeah, and I, ain't mad I mean, at that point. it was just like, I, I just remember, you know, it was a, and they were airing grievances. He's, I'm like, yeah. He's like, but I mean, it also, <laughs> not that that was silly, but it also has like one of the hardest sections. And I'm like, yes, it closes with a very, with hard, hard bars. Absolutely. But you ain't, you ain't wrong with traffic is crazy. Everybody's mad. I just want that. I, I now kind of, I'm taking this upon myself to like make this be <laughs> this how we express extreme frustration. Traffic's crazy. Everybody's mad. The train is <laughs> <all asleep. laughs> Oh, oh, man. That's beautiful. I love yeah. that. <laughs> but it also was the cadence because he was also trying to do yeah. it in the style. And, you know, you know, traffic's <laughs> crazy. Everybody's mad. You know, that's how. He- <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, that's beautiful. I love yeah. that. Uh, I, yeah. uh, <laughs> I I definitely like. Where, how did you discover hip hop? Like, what were, how did you keep in the. Uh, like not the genre, obviously, but like, how did you discover like new music when you were growing up? Oh, I um, I was very big on this college radio station in Atlanta for Georgia State University. Uh, it was called it's called Album eighty eight, um, okay, eighty eight point five. Uh, left on the dial, but right on the music. I believe that might have been one of their <laughs> catchphrases. Hell yeah! Uh, but I uh, they played all kinds of stuff just a wild mix of anything and that's and they also had specialty shows so they would have just like music that wasn't normally being played or it was mostly british artists but then they also had you know a hip-hop show that played for four hours on a sun every sunday right Um, and that itself grew and those were like local djs would come up to the station and spin and then uh you know, um, uh, Brit pop stuff, which started out as like they would do like a a weekly top forty, like the way there was here with Casey Kasem, but they did of uh, the British charts. So they yeah. would play, you know, the forty songs that were uh, top of the British charts, like every Sunday or something like that. And then um, just other things. They had a blues one. They had a a, a reggae out night. They had just all kinds of things. And they'd switch up. It would switch up based on the students because it was student run. The whole thing was student run. Um, So as students graduated and new ones came in, new shows would come in based on the interest of whoever's DJing at the time. Uh, So that is mostly how I got a lot of it. And then um, through that, I read a lot of magazines. I read a lot of magazines. When I was able to like afford my own like subscriptions, yeah. I had probably at my peak, maybe like 10 magazines <laughs> being sent to me. So just like Rolling Stone and Spin, but also Vibe. I remember seeing the first Vibe and buying it and then just waiting. It took a year before that first, the very first issue of Vibe was just like a, not like a tester, but just like a, here you go. Uh, what do you think of this? And everyone loved it. And then it took them a year before they were ready to like do it monthly. Yeah. So I think I filled out the card to get my subscription and just waited and waited and waited. And in a year, the second, (laughs) the second (laughs) issue showed up and I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) Um, And then it was like, oh, okay, we're on top of this now. (laughs) So, you know, things like, like I got, those magazines and then for indie rock i got like magnet and then i i got other like girl magazines like uh girly magazines to me are like sassy and jane and uh and then like l and then there was one called ray gun that was for indie rock like i just bought all the music magazines and just read a lot and then once i worked in a record store i would go through and pick out things that i like the covers of mm. if i like the art on the cover i would um check it out. If there was some artist that I enjoyed, I looked to see what the, um, who the record company was. And then I kept them an eye out if it was a smaller one yeah. for other things by that record company. I was a real nerd. 
<laughs> Hell yeah. Yo, that's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it was I, a lot, it was a lot more legwork. Um But like I, I feel like that there was like a, a bit of pride when like you uh like when you found like a kindred spirit like that, like like you could tell it. You know, like you could tell that like, yo, you wanna mind, you know. I, I felt like I was the same way. Like I got really into like read like uh I'd read the credit notes, the footnotes to see who they thanked, mm-hmm. and then look look out for like the first like uh after they got through their direct family would be people that also did music with them. Yeah. So like I would look for those people and guest appearances and like gauge uh how likely they were to be on future tracks based mm-hmm. on how high up in the thank yous they were. Like, oh, he said thank <laughs> you to you like three paragraphs in. Like, I'm never seeing you again. You know, like right, this right, is a right. formality. You know, but, but uh, if they got their own separate line of a thank you apart from the whole block of text, that was a very know, important person. Yeah, they in the process, yes. you know? Yeah, uh, you know, it's like uh and and featuring, you know, yeah, <laughs> Julia yo. Roberts or something. That's what it meant. <laughs> Straight up, you know? I love that, yo. I was I was so into all of that. So like um like there's people that I have no idea what they physically look like, but I'm a mm-hmm. fan of them. Be I would get excited when I would see their name in credits. So like uh one person is for example uh Duro. There's this guy Duro who he was a recording engineer in Queens and in New York, um, most known for working with DJ Clue. So okay. DJ Clue was putting out all these mixtapes for years, sounded and they sounded horrendous, like audio wise. <laughs> Right. Just because he would just he and, and you understand it, right? He's like stealing songs before they're finished in order right. to put them out first. So like the audio aspect of it was all over the place. And like his boy goes to like the Institute of Audio Research. He's like, yo, my man, like, we gotta mix this shit. This is crazy, you know? And <laughs> slowly, like the audio quality of his mixtape starts sounding like albums. Um, he learns how to make beats and like partners with clue and they like start putting out beats together um they start the record label and like all of that jazz but do every time i saw his name i was like okay i know i know clue found someone dope but i know he made sure it sounded good you know <laughs> that's nice <laughs> yeah. yeah and that dude's integral i'm like yo you don't understand like you would like nobody would have gave a fuck about fabulous without this guy like he mm. made that like you got all of his early records were mixed by this professional caliber dude despite the fact that Fabulous was, like, a 17-year-old kid. You know, like, right. nobody would have cared about him. But, like, he, like, I right, Clue fucks with you. I'm going to rock with you. I'm going to record your mixtapes, um, despite the fact that, like, I normally charge 400 an hour. You mm-hmm. know? So, like, I became a fan of, like, that guy. And then, like, uh, another big, uh, another similar thing was, like, uh, with Queens rappers. Because, like, uh, in particular, Queensbridge, where, like, it felt like if you were born there, you had to rap. Like, uh, (laughs) they put out compilation albums that were Queensbridge specific that would have like featuring 170 people. And I swear, (laughs) like, if you were from that hood, you had to have a 16 to leave. Like, you couldn't. Oh, wow. So, like, there would be people getting thanked on albums, and like, they would be featured on like two songs. Mm -hmm. And like, it was just like, so like weird that like I I knew these names from shout outs mm. that I would never know who like there's a young lady named Chinky who sings the hooks <laughs> on like three more beat songs. I don't know who Chinky is. No idea. <laughs> but oh, she's on wow. two more beat tracks and he sh- and then Prodigy shouts her out on other songs. Right. He uh, he uh he meets a hot uh young lady one day. And he says, told us she had potential. Talk to Chinky. I don't know who Chinky is, but <laughs> she's the barrier girl before the other girls are allowed in the crew. Like, I oh, know her wow. in my life. I can't forget that bar. And I know she sings the hook on one of the songs on, uh, on, the, on the same album. And, like, that's just forever ingrained in me. But, yeah, it's because I read so many footnotes. Like, I'm right with you. Yes. I, I no, think about, I get like, that. I'm, I'm big on liner notes as well, for sure. Yeah. So like um, I think about like my daughter and I'm like I don't know how you're gonna get that that same thing because like I'd read the footnotes I'd memorize all this I spent hours on the forums trying to talk with other people like me trying mm-hmm. to find if they knew or understood a nuanced connection more um, I I love talking with people from LA because like I could give them specific New York shit 
and they would tell me like a weird backstreet in Compton is what this guy was referencing in the lyric. And right. I can explain to him what the Av meant when like Pharaoh March sang a whole song about it. You right. know, like there was nuance that we could trade. Like there was a cultural like currency I had. Uh, and just cause I lived here, like I got excited when I got on the I-95 or, uh, or like, you know, like the cross bronze. I'm like, Oh, I know this song. You know? <laughs> right. 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 You know? So yeah, like I, I, uh, I, I love that aspect of it. And then like, I see my daughter and I'm like, yo, why do you like this song? She's like, Oh, it's, it's like a popular meme. And like, there's like, like, there's a meme that was popular like two years ago. The, uh, the, Oh no joint. You, I'm sure you've heard it where like something bad oh, happens. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh-huh. That is a song by Capone from Capone and Noriega. Mm-hmm. And I knew that the second I heard it, because I'm one of the like 14 people that bought that album. Right. You know? And my daughter is just thinking it's a cute meme song. I'm like, no, this guy did hard time in jail. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> so he could sing this song about about like what is gonna happen when you confront him. Okay. This was a right. very like personal, challenging, aggressive track that you kids uh out here like making into a silly thing. But it's and on top of that, the Ono oh sample is from uh the group that I think sang leader of the pack. Yeah. From the like the girl group. So I'm like, okay, what is this? What is the fifties or sixties? What's the doo up? What's the girl group song that this oh no is from? And then I'm like, oh, and I guess Capone, I guess they they sampled it for something too. And then <laughs> like I didn't. <laughs> and so yeah, so now like references are, you know, <laughs> they're too deep. They're so deep. Yo. Right. Um, so it's, and I mean, perhaps, cause I, I was just wondering like, what's the entry point? Do you know, like what yeah. happened after blogs? And I'm like, I don't, I can't even think of what, what's the way that things are even being introduced to people. And then my brain was like, uh, TikTok, shall I, it's, it's TikTok. Yeah. Remember it was, it was Vine for a hot second, but Tumblr a, a lot kind of moved to Tumblr, but then it was, it, now it's TikTok. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. There were full on songs that I have no, like, cause I'm not really on it like that, but yeah, I, yeah. when I do go on, there's a new song that's big, or some new weird remix of a song. And now if you go if you go to Spotify, the TikTok versions of the song, the artist may release like a TikTok version of that song. Sped up or slow down or something <laughs> like that. And you're like, "Oh, this is because it's on TikTok and people are doing they're sh- doing a weird hip shake and dance to it." Yeah. When it's fast. So now here's that tempo. Straight up. All the yeah. uh, whole 42nd track. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, kind of. Um, but it's also why songs are shorter and I'm a little upset about that. Yeah. I miss third verses. I uh, c- can we get a bridge? Yo. Can we even get a bridge? Straight I mean, up. the third verses are good too. Uh, a bridge is good. Like it's just first verse, second verse, fade yeah. to black. That's it. Straight up. Uh, the songs are like, um, yeah, they're just so short. And I'm like, wow, I, I'm sure this would, they would let this ride. I'm sure there's a time where they they would let this ride a little bit. Like they, they, someone would, even if you, even if people wanted to put a rap feature on it, they don't have the space anymore. Yo, just give me a quick four bars. You know what I mean? You yeah, yeah. We'll we'll try to make a hook around it, maybe. But if not, you know, sorry. Think about the poor radio host. You know, who like well, can never take a bathroom break. Like, yeah, so like, I think. No, nah, I'm just saying like, you, can't, you can't take a bathroom break anymore. Oh well, I mean there, because there were like radio edits, right? Which yeah. it was not just clean versions. Let me go ahead and say that right now. A radio edit isn't doesn't only mean it's the clean version. A radio edit is a little bit shorter if the song is like, you know, album version. That's right. the longer version of it, right? And the radio edit's a little bit shorter, so it'll fit on there. There's no need for a radio edit now. Like full on songs are a min or two minutes and fifteen seconds, um, which is wild. Um, but I guess you get to cycle through more of them, maybe in the when you set up like the playlist. I guess yeah, you know that's fair. the popular ones can now be played maybe twice an hour or 
or sooner than like every 45 minutes or something like that. Like, I feel like I timed it once years ago. I was just like, all right, this song seems to be on the heavy playlist. Let's see how many times it plays in an hour. And it played twice, like 45 minutes, like 45 minutes apart. And I was like, that's wild. But um, yeah, no, I mean, for the most part, I think... (laughs) Now DJs aren't even, I don't even know if they're in studios anymore. Are they just at home and they put in a big tape and they just kind of, and I think that was Sam Smith anyway. And then they just disappear. And then the robots come and tell you about Toyota thon or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I will say the one thing I am happy with is that it does allow for older songs to come back again, which is a new thing to me. Like, uh, Something I've no like I was uh, I, when I went to uh, Coney Island, we drove in the car for like a half hour each mm-hmm. way. And I heard Miguel's sure thing three times on the radio. What? Why? Is that big it's, on Twitter? It, or? It, it's popular now because it it's a TikTok thing. It oh, became wow. popular on TikTok. Oh, wow. So like, it got repopular on the radio. So that dude's getting new spins on that track 13 years later. Good like, for him. Yeah. It's on rotation again. So. I think that's dope that, like, in theory, if uh, a song really fits uh, a particular idea, it could be repopular again 15, 20, 30 years later. Um, yeah, that's I mean, kids have uh, rediscovered uh, Busta's Put Your Hands mm-hmm. uh, because it was part of, it's like some weird little, it was some weird little TikTok thing, and then it was used to remix uh, some young lady song. Um, and, and that song has like three or four TikTok remixes. Actually, this girl with the, I just want to have a good night. That one, there were like three or four versions of it. So I saw her, I watched her perform that live on Jimmy Kimmel Yeah, and she had dancers with her and they had to do each version of the song, like a little bit of each version of the song. And you could see parts of the audience be like, Oh, this is this song because they only knew that version. <laughs> it's, yeah, this is the regional uh, version. Yeah, like know. they didn't know the original, but they knew the Buster remix, or they didn't know. It was very funny to watch. That is pretty dope. Like uh, as an idea that like you you can have like regional flavors of your song, like like on some McDonald's shit. You know. Well, I mean, you know, Petey Pablo when he Word. had them. In North Carolina, next thing you know, every state had to take their shirt off. <laughs> <It's> no <dope> idea. <laughs> yeah, he was shouting every, he, you know, the remix, the the USA remix had to, and everybody was being welcomed to Atlanta for a minute <laughs> after <laughs> after Jermaine Dupri and Luda. Everybody wanted their own. <laughs> welcome it's to real me. liberal. we like, who could come in? You know, like, yeah. Hey, you <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh man, that's beautiful. Yeah, I, I will. The one bad part is, uh, um, the thing. It's weird because like researching music that much made me, uh, a uh, hip hop snob. And uh, admittedly, oh, I'm proud yes. of that. Like, I'm not even mad at it. I am very particular about the songs I'm gonna waste time listening to because mm-hmm. I, I feel like the little moments I have to like dig into it. I want to hear dope shit. A, B. Uh, as a comic, I pride myself in making dope shit. So I want to hear other people doing that. So mm-hmm. um, when I got a recommendation from somebody, know that I was instantly judging them. And <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, you send me some trash. The next time you talk to me about like music, like it was so low on my priority. If the second joint was trash, I didn't even value your opinion on life. Like I want to <laughs> hear you shit about food. I don't want to hear you talk about clothing. I want to hear about your movie takes, nothing. And that's missing now. So, like, my daughter will send me songs that she thinks I'm going to like. And Uh the only barrier for her to think that dad might like this song is that the rapping is fast. And she doesn't understand that there's more to why I like uh, the rap songs I like. She just thinks, oh, they're, like, fully using the bar to put more words into it. Clearly... This is old people rap where they tried to say more things in the song. So dad's going to like this. And she'll send me these songs of rappers that like say a lot of words, but like they won't even rhyme. They <laughs> won't like there's no artistic intention besides being fast. 
And then, like, in my heart, I'm like, I appreciate that you're trying to connect with me, but, like, mm-hmm. you need to know this is the worst shit ever. <laughs> like, don't send me this shit again. Send me other things, but do better. This is horrible. And, uh-huh. like, then I go on, like, a whole tirade, and then, like, like I've called Aiden out of his room. Like, hey, listen, you didn't send me this, but you need to listen to this conversation. And <laughs> <I'll talk> to- <laughs> Yo, straight up, I, I, uh, uh, there's a song by Toby featuring Black Thought and Royce 5'9 called Father Figure. Yeah. Yes. I brought them both out after this shitty uh, song Michaela sent me last week. And I, like, broke down why the lyrics in this song are so much substantially better than the nonsense she just sent me. I was like, do you understand what's happening? Like, I was pausing, like, ball for ball. Oh, my God. Okay, Funk Master Flex. Straight up. Why? Then I, I got printouts of the, of the Black <laughs> Thought verse. What did she send you? <laughs> I don't even remember. It was some trash dude. I'll, 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 I'll tag it. I don't even want to get in trouble watching me be some famous dude now. But it was no, sure. It was like I I listened to it like four times. I'm like none of this, none of this raps. It's just very fast. None of this is rhyming. None. There's no but, multi-syllabic pattern. But here's the thing: you can't. Like I understand why you would feel like, how dare you? But you also have to realize that is what it sounds like to their ears. Right. And that's what I was trying to teach now. I was like, okay, yeah. I get where you got lost. She doesn't care about learning about the rest of it. It's all going to, well, now here's some new guy who just raps like, the, like it's all going to be like Sims language. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, okay, to them, it's just, do you know what I mean? Like, you can break down, here's, you can break down how what the song is talking about how uh, uh, social ills and mm-hmm. and like real personal stuff and blah 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 and literally all they're hearing is traffic is crazy <laughs> everybody <laughs> mad <laughs> all they're hearing <laughs> there's nothing you can do <laughs> Oh my god, that hurts because it's so true. I know. <laughs> I mean, I was laughing a lot, but there were tears. <laughs> that shit changed my life, and here's this dude in my house talking about traffic is crazy. Everybody, man. <laughs> and all I could do was laugh. all I could do was laugh because I'm like, I mean, he ain't wrong. <laughs> He's not right, but he ain't wrong. You know. <laughs> Oh my God, that hurts! Oh, <laughs> oh man, I sent the Marlon Craft album. I was like, "Yo, this guy's kind of young. Uh, I hope you dig it, and we'll see what happens." Uh, I tried Sky Zoo; that was too much. Uh, old people for her, she said. Um, sure. Aiden, Aiden kind of digs a few of the songs, but like he doesn't play songs on his own time. So I got hope. <laughs> 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 let's see what's happening in the rest of the traffic streets out here. Yeah, uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking uh, of young people, uh, Gen Z's drinking habits are killing concerts. What? That's right, yo. Kids these days just don't know how to party anymore. Uh, or maybe they are at uh, they are better at it than the rest of us ever were. Uh, Billboard writes that Gen Z isn't buying enough alcohol at concerts and music venues are suffering because of it. Fellow millennials, uh, let's celebrate the fact that for once we aren't the generation being accused of killing an industry. Uh, Interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Considering uh, Gen Z is also the generation that invented the Borg. I don't know what that is. Uh, Plastic uh, gallon jug filled with vodka, water, and electrolyte packets optimized for partying all night long. Oh, rock on. Uh, It might be hard to imagine why they wouldn't want uh, to get a little loose at a concert. But just as uh, elder millennials embrace Different trends from younger millennials there are also two sides to Gen Z's drinking habits. Uh, Per Billboard, a number of venue operators noticed alcohol sales declining at concerts, particularly shows aimed at Gen Z audiences. Uh, One operator in Tuscan, Arizona, said they saw a 25% decrease in money spent on alcohol related relative to shows that cater to older generations. Uh, A co-authored study from 2020 found that from the year 2002 to 2018, the number of college students ages 18 to 22 who abstained from alcohol 
increased from 20 to 28. And for those who do drink, they tend to consume less than older generations. At the same time, marijuana use increased among college students during that same period from 27 to 31. So that's what they're doing. They're getting high. Yeah, I I, I, I get this. This makes sense to me. I yeah, think- I mean, it's very funny um, because it feels like businesses are just like, why aren't the kids drinking? We need them drinking. We have all this alcohol. We need them drinking as if these children haven't seen the effects of alcohol. Like, you know what I mean? I just yeah. feel like good on them for actually deciding that, that a generation decides, hey, you know what? I can't with this. <laughs> like, this is, <laughs> this is a lot. And you are, you guys are very close to making marijuana legal in a way uh like across the country right you know so how's i I think i'd rather do that instead of a drink and fucking whatever all of that shit um that's you know i think it's just they like marijuana you can eat it (laughs) you can do it beforehand you know straight up I, i i now now i'm sure you know, alcohol companies are going to try to figure out how to, I don't know. I'm sure they're mad that they're losing out on money and they want to get in on this edible thing. I don't know. Maybe they'll make <laughs> alcoholic gummies, which is insane because people have been doing jello shots since, I don't know, since jello was invented. I mean, I don't know. Like, hey, man, they just ain't drinking no more. That's it. They're health Maybe conscious. Maybe should just sell some fruit. They want fruit. <laughs> Yo, that's I got dry mouths. Right there. There's Give a me. rapper actually that uh his whole brand is oranges. Um what's oh, his really? name? Uh June. Uh he just put out an album with the Alchemist. Who? Larry June? Yeah, Larry June. His whole brand is like entrepreneurship and like oranges. <laughs> Straight up. I okay. I I, I might have I, I don't think I'm making that up. I feel confident. No, that he's you're like, probably right. I'm trying I'm trying to make my way through Alchemist recordings right now. Uh, like oh, that's I what's up. I asked, like, um, hey, if if you know nothing, where should you start? And I got a lot of uh, I got a lot of feedback, <laughs> 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 mostly from Nate Fridson, comedian Nate Fridson, <laughs> who, who uh, messaged me on Twitter and then texted me. <laughs> Plenty of this, so, um, but yeah, yeah. So uh, you're probably you're probably right that it's entrepreneurship and oranges. You're you're probably right. Yeah, but, um, he's like yeah, big like, on like health stuff. I, I like that approach. Yeah, like let's uh, adjust. I mean, I I don't know what the alcohol. Don't worry, there are still enough old people out here trying to <laughs> get drunk yeah. that you can cater to them. But music venues and stuff, y'all might have to actually use those lemons and limes for another thing. <laughs> I, like, go. you know, have some apple slices. Do so, I mean, you know? <laughs> I gotta tell you, you know, it's weird. The second you said that, my first thought was like. You know, I do enjoy a pair when I listen to J. Cole. Like, I mean, that just made sense in my head. J. Like Cole. Like if you had like pair. some fruit cups. Yo. I I would be thrilled cuz I don't really drink much, but what I want sweets. Yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely eat a fruit cup. Give me some apple and peanut butter dip. Yo. Yeah, something like that. I bet would do. You'd be surprised. Straight up. How how great that would be. I'm with it. I'm sincerely down. And like you could like you could like just have like really uh like expensive food brands. So it's still like, you know, you could charge like you could have like Martinelli's like pe- like almond butter and and, and and apple slices. Look, if I'm you going know? to a, an event and it's sponsored by Martinelli's, I'm wearing all the swag. Do you understand? <laughs> I'm wearing I'm wearing your hat. I'm carrying your little string backpack. I'm doing all of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it says here um, to better appeal to health conscious concert goers. Some venue operators are exploring serving mocktails or sparkling water or kombucha or even CBD drinks. Okay. Hey, are you familiar with this um this thing called kava kava drinks? Kava. That sounds familiar. K A V A. I oh, it's like a I protein shake kind of thing. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's as if there's some sort of 
it gives you like a druggy feeling a little bit, but it is a drink. And then there are two different kinds. One that's like, uh, that'll pep you up and one that'll chill you out. I don't know, but I did a show once in a Kava bar and the vibe was weird. (laughs) It was was weird. (laughs) I was just like, I mean, are you awake? What are we doing? Are we all just eating rinds of a fruit? What happened? What's happening in here? (laughs) Like, look, I am, I'm so used to being the sober person at the bar, at the club. I got that down. But the sober person at a Kava place, everyone was moving in slow motion. I didn't know what was going on. I'm just like, what the fuck is this? What was this? (laughs) It was in Bushwick in Brooklyn. Where else? Where else do you think they have some sort of weird? I love this so much because like. Yo, real talk, I know you you you've been through the trenches, like just like I had. <laughs> For you to feel like that, like about a show. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay. No doubt. I'll keep that in mind. Kava sponsored events might not be for me. Or maybe just definitely weird. For, it's some just plant, check them out. right? So it's from the earth. So already you got that attitude. And then <laughs> they do something with it. Like everything was just it felt like everyone was moving in slow motion, like together. <laughs> so I was just like, what is what is this? Do I say my joke slower? Do I give them time? Everyone was just sinking into like threadbare couches. It was <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, what is I can't. I can oh, only man. Do so Yo, much. whoever books that, this? book me. I want to see this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in other news, uh, let's see here. Uh, Dead Woman's Wake uh, wakes up in a coffin at her own funeral. Ah! Yo, uh, Bea uh, Montoya, Montoya, 76, regained consciousness during uh, the vigil, which was being held in the city of Bajoyo. On Friday, incredible video shows medics tending to Montoya after her loved ones realized she was still alive. She can be seen clearly breathing. Yep, that is a lie. She <laughs> removed. <laughs> as she is removed from the casket and placed onto a stretcher. Her left hand was hitting uh, the side of the coffin and it was shaking, said her son, uh, Gilbert uh, Balbaran. Uh, as he told the local press, uh, Balbaran uh, claims that... Uh, uh, the wake was held just four hours after Montoya was declared dead, uh, with the medical examiner even providing him with a death certificate. Uh, her let's post- let's pause there. Yeah. So she was declared dead, and four hours later, they had this bitch in a coffin. Yo, it's <laughs> this sound like an insurance scam, right? Well, yeah. Four hours <laughs> later, <laughs> they had a death certificate and a coffin. <laughs> I got the paperwork you know right here. Long, I mean, I don't know how I don't know how big this town, this city in Ecuador is, but there must be some red tape. Yo. Like and, right yo, away? <laughs> that that's what blows my mind. Cause like every like I'm, I'm, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but every Spanish culture I know, we're trying to keep you above ground as long as possible. Like that process is forever. My mom right. passed away. My mom was in DR for three weeks. She said, mm. oh, we got to do the 10 day afterward. People come visit the house. Like, it's a whole yes. thing, you know? So, like, for you to, like, and this, you got your mom in the box in four hours. You already had the, like, that means you had this set up. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, yo, exactly. In four, I, I can't put a party together in four hours. Domino's in four takes hours, 40 minutes. Your family is already in a place with a body in a coffin. In yo. four hours, my man? That's that's suspect, homie. Mm, look at the now the sun is all up in this article. Just like, I mean, I want her alive with me, and uh, she, you know, her heart rate is stable, and I just want her. Uh, nah, bro, I don't trust you. Yeah, baby. he describes it as a miracle from God. No, no. Wow, y'all, you y'all, real talk. At the very least, like she gotta move out. Like, I don't know who yeah, you stand with, yeah, baby, I don't but, trust, like, your I don't circle is suspect right now. You know what I mean? I knew some was real talk. I, I don't know why, but I just got a bad feeling when, like, the names was different. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> as soon as I saw you had a different last name, I was like, oh, this is going to take a turn. <laughs> oh, man. Mm. It happens, B. Your kids ain't, yo, you gave birth to this kid, yo. 
He over here yeah. trying to cash a check on you, yo. Children ain't shit. Real talk, B. They really aren't. I hope this gets <laughs> <are> better. <laughs> Real talk, man. You deserve it. I hope you live another 76 years. Real talk. Keep I know. Just so spite him. Real talk. Keep all mm. that money. I don't know. Yeah, I just don't. I just. Look, as someone who had to lay to rest two parents, yeah. it's going to take a little longer than four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that is wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, in other news, uh, with, I'm having, uh, there you go, uh, Sri Lanka military doctors have removed what is now uh, recorded as the world's largest kidney stone. From a 62-year-old retired soldier, the Army said, uh, the stone removed from the ex-sergeant uh, Canistus Kongi uh, weighed in at 801 grams or 28.25 ounces, more than five times the weight of the average male kidney. Ooh. That's right. Uh, his uh, kidney stone measured in at 13.37 centimeters or 5.26 inches long compared to the average kidney, which is about 10 to 12 centimeters long. Uh, the removal of the world's largest and heaviest kidney stone uh, through major surgery occurred on June 1st at the Colombo Army Hospital. Uh, Kunji Kun, uh, told the local uh, Swarnavahi uh, TV that he had abdominal pain since 2020 and oral medication had not helped. I was told to undergo surgery after a recent scan. I feel normal now. I would hope so. Uh, the Sri Lankan uh, case surpasses the largest kidney deposit previously recorded of a mere 620 grams by a patient from Pakistan in 2008, according to the Guinness World Records. Uh, officials announced uh, the finding on Wednesday after Guinness World Records recognized it. So that means they had to keep the stone on ice until someone from Guinness came by. <laughs> hey, y'all finish the surgery now, B. You you about to make history, my G. Yeah, hold up, hold up. <laughs> you waited three years. You can't give me two hours? He's in the Uber right now. Yeah, where else? How do you? <laughs> oh, I mean, don't be selfish, okay? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's wild. Someone, has to, someone from Guinness has to come by and eyeball it and fucking measure it and weigh it. Looks about right. Mark it down in a little <laughs> notebook, make some calls and go, yeah, looks like you're you're the new one. Looks official. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> I, yo, who works for Guinness, man? Like, they use all know. call for this shit. The weirdest people. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk, could not be me. Don't be calling me for that. I'm one with, with family. You know I I'm, mean, but I, I imagine, okay, first off, I imagine maybe it's just a lot of single people mm. <laughs> who can take off. You know, at the drop of a hat or a kidney stone or whatever, and go and and do these measurements. People who like uh, figures, people who like spreadsheets. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm building. I'm trying to build a, a profile of who might who might do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, I, like you got to be available at like random time. You don't know when the kidney gonna mess up. That's true. And you got to be able to fly. So lots of frequent flyer miles. I feel like if you work for Guinness, you also use like the Citizens app. What you mean? Wait, you think they're snitches? I, I just think they're available. Oh. You know? Mm. Like if you're right, free to I like randomly. Good, I, I think with good intention as opposed to the Citizens app, which I think is. um, Uh. Uh, I, I don't think they those people are have good intentions. That's fair. I also know yeah, a lot I of th- people on Citizens app that just need $200. And right. they're like... Wait, hold on. So do they just walk around looking for shit for the Citizens app to report? Because there's like a, there's like related apps that like you get money for like covering the crime. So like you if you get points on the Citizens app, they'll like uh, recruit you for the other apps. Oh my god! You know, so you could be like a on call reporter. I got I got a That's ton insane. of people like asking me to like join those apps because they know I'm in East New York. So they're like, "Yo, you're right. people, <laughs> so you could yeah, you in you the middle really of all clean of it. up, yeah." And like real talk, when like I had no, like the first year when I did nothing but comedy, like mm-hmm. this was my only money. Um, I signed up and I went to like a crime scene, <laughs> like because because like it shows it dings you so like. The citizen app will go off, 
Right. And then the other app will be like, yo, go there and right. record the video. video and yeah. all of that. So I show up and like, yo, the Citizens app is like reported so fast because I showed up and like the crime was still happening. Like we, I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> yo. I sh- <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Yo, I'm over here. I'm trying to set up a tripod, and these dudes are still <laughs> actively like in the shootout. Like they, they still. <laughs> oh, like, this is crazy! Like, <laughs> so like I'm, t- I'm sending a video. And they, they'll respond and they'll be like, yo, you got to stop moving. I'm like, they are shooting in this <laughs> video. <laughs> yeah. You tell me my footage is shaky. How are you? Oh, my God. Yo. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. Hardest $50 I ever earned, Sha. This shit was oh. crazy. Straight up, yo. They send you into that shit like you in there. Yo. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> I can't even breathe. That is so oh man. Oh man. That's Those are fun memories, yo. I oh, went to two of them joints. I was like, yeah, this ain't for me, man. Like I <laughs> <laughs> I can't be out here. I ain't trying to be in these stories, you know? Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's terrifying, but also so funny. Yo, I, 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 was, I, was, I was very impressed with how early they spot the crimes. For sure. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is too real. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> in other news, uh, 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 Man spends $100,000 uh, in uh, leg lengthening surgery to add seven inches of height. That's right. Uh, growth operation cost an arm and a leg. Ha ha. But um, boom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a Georgia man was uh, so unhappy with his six foot frame that he spent more than $100,000 on a Turkish leg lengthening surgery to add seven inches of height. I realized that my legs were always looking weird and I didn't know what it was, said Brian Sanchez, 33 years old, a mortgage broker. After sitting next to his much taller brother-in-law, the married father of two realized my legs were too short for my body. I'm broad, I have long arms, and I'm wide. But my short legs make me look different, he added. Uh, I almost look like a huge thumb, like those thumb men from Spy Kids, he said. Uh, Sanchez researched uh, leg lengthening operations and found that a Live Life Taller Clinic in Turkey, which has performed more than 4,400 uh, such procedures and is staffed by uh, physiotherapists and uh, health advisors uh, who have undergone the extension surgery themselves. Uh, Sanchez's family, uh, he said, was in disbelief, but they also said that this is typical of me. <laughs> OK, uh, I oh know uh, this is a very crazy thing. It's an ex- it's extremely expensive, time consuming, difficult, painful and even risky in some respects. Uh, Sanchez sp- uh, spent roughly thirty seven thousand on his first leg surgery. In uh, December of 2022, they broke my tibia, my uh, fibula, and hollowed out the inside of the of the tibia, taking out the bone marrow. They then put a rod inside the bone and fastened it with screws and attached the bone segments via pins to external fixators, so that uh, so you have the, this piece of steel on the inside of your legs and have uh, these constant open wounds that won't close until you remove all the hardware. Uh, while Sanchez uh, had to use an Allen wrench to turn the fixator bolt once a day for two months straight, he said not sleeping was the hardest part for him, uh, though he did confess that he was uh, not ready for how painful the procedures actually were. Uh, I think the pain will be worth it once uh, it's all finished. I'll just be able to enjoy being taller and hopefully feel on top of the world, uh, said Sanchez, who had grown about three inches by uh, since February. Uh, in March, he spent another $69,587 on the second surgery to elongate his femurs and felt great after. Uh, Stop. 
Stop. <laughs> I've let this go on long enough. <laughs> Oh my so God. he was already six feet tall. Yo, straight up. And he, so now he's six seven. Six seven. With hollow bird bones. <laughs> so he can't jog anywhere. Mm-hmm. Because because <laughs> his bone has been <laughs> hollowed out and it just has a little fucking wire hanger on the inside of it, I guess. Straight up. And then he had to re tighten or re his legs with a Ikea wrench <laughs> every day. Straight up. It ain't work. And he was already married with children. Yeah. What's the problem, my man? Yo. And all I, that money could have gone to therapy because up. of a, of a brother-in-law who's taller than you, you six one <laughs> or you're six, you're six feet tall. And you were People real six. Cl- you you're six said, feet yeah. tall. You're already married. You already got kids. You already built. Yo, he's like super muscular. Like he, he yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Also, because you don't want to look like a thumb, baby. Stop. And looking at the get two pictures, here. you look weirder now. Like you yeah. look uncomfortable in the new height. Be- yes, because now you you look like a part. You can't run now. You can't run <laughs> now. You have to walk very gingerly. So now you a swole person. Who can't walk right? <laughs> you got to skip leg day now, and it's noticeable because you're six seven. Here's the thing: if you were five four, and you wanted to get up to like five nine, I'd be like, oh, well, I mean, that's a stretch, but I get it. Yeah, you know, five nine that still puts you among average of male height. Right. So if you walk a little weird, I can just assume that's like an old high school football injury. But now you six seven. Everybody's asking you if you play ball and you're like, I can't even walk to the corner. Like, (laughs) I got to tighten my legs with this wrench. Yo. (laughs) Yeah, it's like the wrench forever. (laughs) Yo, my leg a little Uh, loose today. Nah, I mean, got to tighten it up. Yo, yo, kid, stop playing with my wrench, okay? I know. That's daddy's leg wrench. Oh, get out of (laughs) here. I hope so they like happens- build like a special magnet attachment for the wrench. Like just let it like that it just always sticks to his leg. Well, I mean, it says that you have open sores until. <laughs> so you got open sores for months that you got to stick a wrench through to tighten up your. It's not work. You're already six feet tall, my dude. Yeah, yo. And yeah. married with children. So who are you doing this for? Is this for yourself? Yeah, it has I mean, to be. All right. I guess I can't get mad. This is gender affirming. Fucking <laughs> surgery. Oh my God. Cause like you went from my thing is that like you went from convenient to not convenient. Right. Like life, like I, I get like if you were too short uh in your head, but you, uh, to your point, you're like five four as a man. There's like a lot of times where I could see that being an issue because things mm-hmm. were built for a certain height. But six feet, like you are the target demo. Right. Like every all the shelves in your life have been the thing for you. At six seven, you are now re going into a headache issue. Like be- mattresses don't work for you no more. Right. Like everything is built for not you. You just yes. reintroduce all the headaches. You can never buy pants off the rack. Yeah. Like there's so many like new issues. Like I, what cars do you fit in? Mm. You, you ain't in the Civic no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, what are you doing, my G? You made so much like life was catered to people your height. And yeah. you just purposely got out of that. And not even a little bit. You could have stopped. You got the first three inches. You got the first February. three. You were good. good. At six three, you were Steve Nash height. No, straight up. NBA player. Yeah. And you had to go. Six <laughs> seven. Come on, man. <laughs> Let's think this. And story. I mean, you did all the bones. Yeah. You got the femur, the tibula, and the fibula. Come on. <laughs> you got all the bones in Too your much. legs. Too much. Are now me. brittle and hollow. Yo. Can't get through airports now. And you got to explain this whole leg thing. Whole thing. You got to do a whole thing. But I mean, you know, I guess if you feel, if you, if you feel happy, I don't know. I guess. Yo, real whatever. talk. On, on, not a single one of your kids better be like, y'all don't got money for college. Not a single That's one. That's a very be. good point. 
If you drop yeah. 100 racks on your legs and I got to go to like a two-year community college because of that shit, <laughs> yo, we throwing hands, Pops, and I know exactly where I'm hitting you. <laughs> well, oh, like, <laughs> I'm busting my ass. I got a 93 average and I got to go to community college because of you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can't reach for my dream so you can reach the top of the fridge. It's some bullshit, <laughs> man. I refuse. <laughs> yo. Them people are selfish, yo. Now, you should have kids if this is a concern of yours. Mm. Real talk. Like, on some real shit, like, you gotta, yeah. you gotta handle you. If you have any Just because you security. sat next to a brother-in-law who was taller than you. Yo. Yo, all of this money could have been spent on therapy. To make sure this is really, I feel like you really needed to get over a different issue. Real talk. This is like, something here. Yeah. Anywho, I wish you the best. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good luck out there, homie. Good luck out there, Real buddy. Talk. <laughs> 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 Finally, uh, Raccoon was uh, euthanized after a woman brought it into a pet store and other customers kissed it. No, uh, what? What? Uh, okay, uh, uh, in Auburn, Maine, a raccoon uh, was euthanized oh uh, and tested for rabies after a woman bo- uh, brought it into the pet store for a nail trim, and some customers kissed it, state wildlife authorities said. Uh, the raccoon was tested negative for the disease, and there is no rabies risk to the public uh, in Maine. Um, however, uh, raccoons are the most common carriers of rabies in the state, and bringing the wild animal into a pet store constituted an unnecessary risk to the public health. Uh, said Mark Laddie, the uh, Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife spokesperson in Maine. Uh, the woman, who has not been identified by authorities, bro- brought the raccoon into the Auburn Pet Store on Tuesday. The Wildlife Department said she was seeking to get the animal's nails trimmed, which is a service the store does not provide to raccoons. Uh, several different uh, people <laughs> uh, handled the animal and some kissed it, the Wildlife Department said. The store's manager then asked the woman to leave and contacted the main center uh, for disease control and prevention. Uh, the raccoon was then tested for the disease, which came back negative, but ne- ne- uh, necessitated euthanizing it. Uh, there is no non-lethal test for rabies uh, in animals. You uh, know what else is a funny uh, fact about rabies? What's that? It has a 100% kill rate. <laughs> what? In humans. Yes. Yo, I didn't you know You may that. not get it, but if you get it, you will die from it. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> yo, for real? Yeah. When those, if you start feeling those symptoms, it's too late, baby. <laughs> oh shit! I didn't know so, that. So, if you think you've been exposed to a scratch by a an animal, and you and you don't know if that animal has had its rabies shot and all that kind of shit, you need to get that vaccine immediately. And I don't know if it's still that long ass needle that they stick in your stomach like they used to tell us in school, but <laughs> um, but yeah, it ain't fun ultimately, but you need to get it to fight off the chance of getting rabies. Cause once you start feeling like, oh no, I think I have rabies, <laughs> it's, you done. It's over. <laughs> Four hours later, you in a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, yo. <laughs> if you would like to invest in our uh, quick turnaround funeral service, that's right. <laughs> Four hours or less, and we ready for you. All you got to do is like, subscribe to the show, baby. If you are oh Apple, or Spotify listener, <laughs> we appreciate your ratings. Four stars, you've never had to bury anybody in four hours. You know, what are you, a normal person? You know, you want to like connect and uh, say bye to normal speed? <laughs> no, me. We got stuff to do. Five hours. You a focused person who maybe has a two to three million dollar life insurance policy on this person and needs them in the ground now. We appreciate those stars. That's right. Uh, if you have any articles you want us to cover, uh, please DM us directly on Twitter, or Instagram at Silky Jumbo at Gastro Monte. Uh, shout out this week to uh, This Is Des uh, FCBLJ. Blender Reality and Wendy Locke. Uh, really appreciate y'all sharing uh, some articles this week with us. Uh, with all that said, I'm soon to be millionaire with this turnkey business, Gastro Almonte. With, uh, I'm I'm going to be a millionaire by opening up a nail salon for raccoons. Ooh, look at that. I can't imagine 
somebody seeing a raccoon and going, maybe I should just, let's go get a trim. <laughs> what the fuck? I can't. <laughs> what? I, I'm, I'm so blown away just by that. I got to tell you, though, like. I'm not surprised people kiss the raccoon. I'm not surprised. People, people really? are stupid. Yo. I don't know. I feel like kissing the raccoon is like wilder to me. I mean, yeah. Like, I, I could cut my dog's nails. I never want to kiss him. Yeah, but it's a raccoon, so you shouldn't do either. That's you fair. shouldn't look at a raccoon and go, you need your nails trimmed. <laughs> <laughs> and then you shouldn't bring it into a place. <laughs> Y'all don't do this? People, the kind of people who are probably working uh, to, you know, at a at an animal salon. Yeah are more than likely the kind of people who would be like, oh, look at this raccoon. Because if you manage to get a raccoon in the place, well, then it must be okay for me to kiss him. <laughs> you understand that leap? I love anyway, that. I'm going like... to make, make millions. <laughs> you're going to crush it. I lo- I'm going to crush it. The one challenge you're going to have is staffing. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. you have to remember, like, the manager had to, like, overcome all these really, like, raccoon-loving people. That works mm-hmm. for him. They're like, yo, we could cut his nails. I know we don't do yeah. it normally, but like, look True. how cute this raccoon is. Yeah. And also, um, some of these raccoons that will come in will probably have rabies. So I'm going to lose a lot of human staff. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of turnover. A lot of turnover. Yeah. A lot of turnover either way. <laughs> With the uh, soon to be raccoon nail trimming millionaire and uh, also rabies shot already took. So she's safe. <laughs> she lay with Shaw. <laughs> this has been uh, an entrepreneurial episode of the War Report. Catch y'all next time. Peace.